sliding window, a powerful problem solving pattern where you use two pointers to define a window and slide them over a data structure, typically an array or a string, to find subarrays or substrings that meet a certain requirement. There are currently 145 lead code problems tagged with this approach, showing just how important it is for coding intervals. Using this approach, you can reduce the time complexity of many array and string related problems from order of n squared to order of n. In this video, I will break down what the sliding window pattern is, when to use it, how it works, different types of sliding windows, generic template for solving sliding window problems, and I will walk you through multiple lead code problems to help you understand it better. I will also share a resource where you can practice more problems using this pattern. So let's jump in. What is the sliding window pattern? Think of sliding window as a way to efficiently process a subset of data by focusing only on the most relevant portion at any given time. Types of sliding windows. There are two main types of sliding windows, fixed sliding window and dynamic sliding window. The fixed sliding window maintains a constant length as it slides across the data structure. This is commonly used if the required window size is known in advance and the problem asks us to find subarrays or substrings of a fixed length. Here is a generic template to solve fixed sliding window related problems for a window of size k. Initialize variables to track the result and window state such as sum, count, or frequency. Set up the initial window by processing the first k elements. Slide the window across the remaining elements by adding the new element and removing the old element that moves out of the window. Update the result accordingly. Unlike a fixed window, a dynamic window expands and shrinks based on conditions. It is commonly applied to problems where the window size is not fixed and the problem asks us to find the longest or shortest subarray or substring that satisfies a condition. Here is a generic template to solve dynamic window related problems. Initialize the left pointer at the start of the data structure. Initialize variables to track the result and the window state such as sum, count, or frequency. Move the right pointer across the data structure, like array or string. Expand the window by including the current element. While the current window violates the condition, shrink it by excluding and advancing the left pointer until it becomes valid again. Update the window state and result accordingly. Now let's work through few lead code problems to understand it better. First, we will solve a problem with a fixed window size. Then, we will tackle a problem with a dynamic window size. First problem is lead code 643, maximum average subarray 1. You are given an integer array nums and an integer k, and you need to find the maximum average of any contiguous subarray of size k. For example, if the input is this and k is 4, the subarray 12 minus 5 minus 6 50 has the maximum average of 12.75. The brute force approach to solve this problem iterates through every possible subarray of size k, calculating its sum and determining the maximum sum. After processing all subarrays, divide the maximum sum by k to get the maximum average. But this has the time complexity of order of n times k. Since for every starting point of a subarray, we iterate k times to calculate the sum. This leads to a lot of repetitive calculations since many elements are included in multiple subarrays. We can optimize the solution to order of n using the sliding window pattern. Here is the key idea. Use a window of size k that slides one element at a time. Update the window sum dynamically by subtracting the element that's leaving the window and adding the element that's entering the window. Here is how it looks like in code. Here I'm using Java, but you can find the code for other popular programming languages in my GitHub repository called Awesome Lead Code Resources. Link is in the description. First, calculate the sum of the first k elements to initialize the window. Initialize max sum to the sum of the first window. Max sum will keep track of the maximum subarray sum of size k. Slide the window across the rest of the array. Update the window by subtracting the leftmost element and adding the current array element to the window. You can find the leftmost element by going back k positions. Next, update the maximum sum if the new window sum is greater. After the loop ends, divide the maximum sum by k to get the maximum average. Using this fixed sliding window approach, we iterate over each element only once, which reduces the overall time complexity to order of n. The space complexity is order of 1 since we are not using any additional space. Let's move to the next problem, lead code 3, longest substring without repeating characters. You are given a string as, find the length of the longest substring that doesn't contain any repeating characters. In other words, the longest substring must contain only unique characters. For example, if the input string is this, the output is 3, since the longest substring without repeating characters is ABC with a length of 3. The brute force solution involves checking every possible substring and verifying if all its characters are unique. While this approach works, it's highly inefficient with a time complexity of order of n cube. Order of n squared to iterate through all possible substrings times order of n to check uniqueness for each substring. This is far too slow for large inputs, mainly because we look through every possible substring. So let's see if we can optimize it using sliding window pattern. Instead of checking every possible substring, we can use a dynamic sliding window to efficiently track unique characters. We maintain a window that expands when all characters inside are unique 
and shrinks when a duplicate character is found. Each substring fits into one of the two categories. A. It contains only unique characters. In this case, we should expand the window by advancing the right pointer to find a longer window that also contains no duplicate. Or B. It contains a duplicate. In this scenario, we should shrink the window by advancing the left pointer until it no longer contains a duplicate. To efficiently check for duplicate characters, we use a hash set. Here is how it works step by step. In slice two pointers left and right to represent the boundaries of the current substring, both starting at index 0. Use a hash set to store the characters in the current window for quick lookups of duplicates. Expand the window by moving the right pointer and adding the current character to the hash set. If the current character is already in the hash set, which indicates a duplicate, shrink the window by moving the left pointer forward. Remove characters from the hash set until the duplicate is removed. This ensures that the substring remains valid, containing only unique characters. After each adjustment, calculate the length of the current substring and update the maximum length if needed. Continue until the right pointer reaches the end of the string. Here is how it looks like in code. Initialize a set to track unique characters in the current substring. Initialize max length to 0 to track the maximum length of substring without repeating characters. Initialize left pointer to 0, which represents the starting index of the current substring. Use a for loop with the right pointer across the string, expanding the window one character at a time. If duplicate is found, which means character already exists in the set, shrink the window from the left by removing the leftmost character from the set and incrementing the left pointer. After adjusting the window, add the current character to the set. Calculate the length of the current substring and update max length if necessary. Once the right pointer reaches the end of the string, return max length. The time complexity of this approach is order of n, since each character is processed at most twice, once when it's added to the window and once when it's removed from the window. The space complexity is order of k, where k represents the size of the character set. In the worst case scenario, the hash set stores all the unique characters in the string. If the character set is small, for example all lowercase English letters, you can optimize this further by using a frequency array instead of a hash set. This can make the implementation slightly faster and more memory efficient. Here are some more lead code problems you can practice using this approach. You can find these problems on algomaster.io. Simply head over to the practice page, search for this pattern or use the filter dropdown and start practicing. On this platform, you can mark problems as complete or star them for later revision. You can also find the links to GitHub and YouTube solutions for each problem. You can check out the full lead code patterns playlist here. I hope you found this video helpful. Make sure to subscribe so you won't miss my future videos. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.